Let me start that again. G'day, everyone. How are you going? Uh, my name is Murray. I am uh, one of the head honchos at Plastex. Who here has seen me speak already? <laughs> right then. So the first lesson is when they say we're a speaker short, don't say yes, I'll do it. Um, so as I'm sure, actually I probably should ask you how my, how my next thing goes, but I won't. Um, Plastex is a physical and digital supply chain for the recovery of plastic in Asia. Now, many of you will have already seen this presentation, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to talk about something else. I'm going to talk about our uh, program that we ran there last year. We ran in Malaysia last year. Uh, we needed a pilot program uh, to unlock some funding and to also prove to ourselves that the unit economics worked and all that sort of thing. We've done pilots in India, we've done work in uh, uh, Thailand as well, um, and Plastex is designed particularly to do, um, to recover plastic in Asia, just in Asia. Um, I, I mentioned in the last presentation there was a huge amount of PET uh, in Asia that, uh, that doesn't get uh, recovered. Malaysia is actually slightly ahead of the game in terms of their, uh, their recycling about 17% of all PET, but 17% of Malaysia's share of 250 billion bottles a year is nowhere near enough. So our customer, we start with demand of course, and our customers uh, come to us, they ask us to find them particular amounts of particular plastics. We then send that out through our connector, our collector uh, group and they, uh, they go and get it, bring it back to us, we then send it off. So we really streamline the, the process. During our, uh, our, our program in, uh, in Malaysia last year, we collected in about six weeks, we collected about four and a half tonnes of PET. The difference between collecting the kind of PET that we did and the kind of PET that goes through what I call the old system, the, the many steps uh, system of, of recycling, is that when it comes to us, because we're demand driven, our customer gives us all the parameters that they want. They might want it lid on, lid off, or label on, label off. Uh, they may ask for it clean. Um, and so to fulfil uh, the requirements of that, our collectors, before it even gets near us, fill in all those, all those uh, requirements. And that's pretty exciting because it changes the paradigm around uh, traditionally dirty plastic comes in at one end and it gets traded through and then at some stage it's still dirty plastic and it's ended up at a, a, a recycling processes uh, factory and it has, then still has to be cleaned. So what it means is that we're enabled to, uh, because we're shortening that, that supply chain, it means that we can actually pay our collectors double what they're getting through the current system and it means that they're also willing to do those little extra things like take off the labels or leave the lids on or whatever. Um, and that in itself is pretty cool. So we set up, we got a, a truck, as you can see I'm posing in front of a truck there, um, which is an old food truck um, with the gas, <laughs> gas burners taken out, uh, so it's a big empty thing. And we did that because in reality it's bright orange, the whole truck is bright orange. So we uh, partnered with Aeon Malls, and Aeon Malls is a big Japanese uh, retailer in Asia and in um, Malaysia itself they've got about 200 outlets so it's quite a quite a big concern and uh, we've signed an agreement with them to uh, run another 30 over the next two years 30 hubs at 30 different locations with them all over Malaysia. Um, the, the truck is designed to, for two purposes one it's designed to be a destination it's designed to create um, a, a sort of a disruption factor at the front of the uh, shopping centre to create pe create interest and people come up to us and go, well, what are you guys selling? And it's like, well, we're not selling anything. Um, but it's also an education uh, opportunity and it's also 
logistics, it's also transport. Because at the end of the day, our trucks then hit the road, go to the factory, which in Malaysia is easy because we're in Kuala Lumpur. The factories in, are in Kuala Lumpur. Um, and that makes life pretty easy. So the trucks go out, they, they drop off the, uh, off the plastics and then come back to their position ready for the next day. Um, as I say, we collected about four and a half tonnes uh, in a six-week period, which was pretty good to be starting off with a single unit. Uh, our plan over the next 12 months is to collect about 7,000 tonnes of different plastics. We have uh, orders in our order book for uh, about 5,000 tonnes of HDPE and uh, another couple of thousand tonnes, 2,800 tonnes of um, PET. So it's pretty exciting place we're in. We've worked through everything and now I'm doing the rounds of VCs, which is not very exciting at all. Um, you're talking about investment and things. Uh, it's a program that is being embraced by the locals wherever we are. And what that really means is that we've uncovered a whole new market. So traditionally, there are waste pickers who work on landfills and in kind of marginal spaces. We've uncovered uh, kind of the lower middle class, or what they call in Malaysia the lower 40%. And they are very motivated to uh, bring their, their plastics through because there's no formal uh, recycling infrastructure. And, uh, and so we're able to take that plastic based on the information that we have and, uh, and then have it recycled. And that's probably it, really, because the rest of you have heard the rest of the story already. Uh, Chris. Thanks, Murray. No worries. Um, it just I would think that just goes to show that, um, I mean, there's many ways to skin a cat, so to speak, as far as recycling or, or resource recovery. And obviously that's highlighting the um, reflecting cultural differences and in infrastructure and systems Absolutely, and processes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, one last thing. If anybody wants to contact me or connect with me on LinkedIn, there I am. That's it. <laughs>